Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Top SST. Today it's the last video for the chapter Globalization and the Indian Economy. And uh, previous two videos I have covered the maximum question and in this video I have covered all three and five marks questions. Okay, let's move to the first question. How did Cargill Foods become the largest producer of edible oils in India? Okay, now this is the again one of the source which is being given in the textbook and apart from the source based question they can ask you in the form of the question also which can come for three marks okay so what they are asking they are asking you the Cargill Foods okay that was one food company how it has become a larger producer of edible oil in India so how like you know what are the different reasons that from like you know they have become a, one of the largest producer so the first one uh, the first point is Cargill Food is a a very large American MNC. So now you need to first understand that Cargill Foods was not an Indian company, it was an American MNC. It has brought over smaller Indian companies such as Parak Foods and expanded the range of its production of edible oils in India. So what they have done, okay, it was an MNC company, okay, it was an American MNC company and what they have done in India, when they came in India, we have already learned that how MNCs can expand their business in one country so first thing either they invest second or they buy uh, the small industry or they start investing so what Cargill Food has done they started expanding their business in India by uh, uh, by doing the expenditure on different 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 small industries okay so Parak Food was one of the things where they have expanded the range of its production second Parak Food had built a large uh, marketing network in various parts of India. Okay, so Parak Food was already a brand, recruited brand in, in, brand in India and Cargill Food, what they have done, they have invested over here. So Parak Food had oil refineries whose control has become a largest producer of uh, edible oils in India. It refines processes and markets and various edible soils for the food industry. So when MNC has spent, they have done their homework. Okay, so already they knew that Parak Food was already a recruited brand in the country. Many popular brands like Swika, Natural Fresh, Jiminy are uh, other, uh, other part of the Cargill Food. So this is how it has become one of the largest producer of edible oil. Next one. Why did Ford Motor Company want to develop Ford India as a component supplying base for its plants across the globe? Okay, so again, this is your source base. Okay, apart from the source base, they can ask you the question also. It can come for two marks. So uh, even in the source base, they can ask you this question for two marks. Maybe like, you know, they will not give you these details and they will be expecting you to write the answer. A number of local manufacturers are supplying components of their Chennai plant and the MNCs feel that they can supply components of other parts across the globe. So like, you know, we have learned wherever the raw materials are there, the MNC come and they establish their own uh, uh, small factory over there. Cost of labor and material is very low in India. Sorry, very low in India. Next, the components can be easily supplied to other MNC car manufacturers in India and China. So this is how like, you know, they have started spreading across the globe. What are special economic zone? Why is the government setting special economic zone? Very, very important question. It can come for two marks. This can also come for two marks. So first you special. Special ka matlabi kya hota khas. Okay, economic zone. Special economic zone. So what is what is the meaning of special economic zone? So special economic zones are defined as a specific geographical area. So consa geographical area, which geographical area is specified as a special one in which laws, very important keyword. Okay, laws for regulation are different from the laws followed in the country. Okay, that is the reason why it is called as a special economic zone. Uh, Jaise mene aapko bataya, special ka matlabi kya hai khas. Okay, why it is known as special? Something will be different. Okay, so what is the difference of special economic zone and other zones? The laws and the regulations are different in special economic zone and in the other part of the country. So in which 
region lies the special economic zone a specific area okay ek specific area hota hai jahan pe एंकरेज किया जाता है किसको एंकरेज किया जाता है एमएनसीज को इन्वेस्ट करने के लिए एंकरेज किया जाता है सो दैट फ्री मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एंड एक्सपोर्ट एक्टिविटी कैन बी टेकन प्लेस सो स्पेशल इकोनॉमिक जोन में यहाँ पे टैक्स रिजम्शन होता है फॉर सर्टन पीरियड ऑफ टाइम ओके द गवर्नमेंट डोंट लेव द टैक्सेज एंटिल द इकोनॉमिक जोन इज डेवलप फुली then special economic zones are set up by government to attract foreign companies to invest in india just now i told you okay so that the foreign direct investment can happen in the economic zone so why like you know the, uh, other country or the foreign country they will do the investment okay so how they can attract like you know how the government can attract them the one of the reason when the there will be a tax redemption or there will be no tax over that place so definitely the foreign countries will come and invest uh, over these areas these have world class facilities of electricity water etc those companies that have invest in the special economic zone for the initial 5 years okay after 5 years once it is established then the government start leaving the taxes but 5 saal ke liye they will not have any tax to be paid uh for the development of that area they have a world class facilities as i told you before also like for example electricity water road transport storage okay recreation education facility these are the facilities which are provided in the economic zones example it sector in gurgaon pune bangalore okay these were established so initially 5 years okay for example uh, gurgaon everyone know in pune also hinjewadi or like you know if you take in place of magapata these all are were called as a special economic zone but not now okay bangalore also for example um, electronic city was under the special economic zone for the initial 5 years but now it is fully developed so if you go in these area electronic city or hinjewadi or even in the gurgaon like you know the it sector you will see that all the world class facilities even the uh, like you know a residential area or for example if you take an example of transportation system or roads you will see that all world class facilities are provided why because in the initial stages for 5 years the foreign investment uh, the mncs has done the investment why they have done the investment because there was no taxes which needs to be paid by them i hope you have understood let's move to the next question describe the impact of globalization on small producer now we know very well we know the meaning of globalization from when the globalization started or like you know when the new economic policies were introduced under the new economic policy we have learned about the globalization so now when we talk about the globalization what was the impact on the small producer okay we know that globalization is interconnection and integration between the countries okay between the countries globally so globalization globalization encourages competition we know that okay big industries and companies have been able to complete but what happened to the small producers small producers are hit badly how the small producers are hit badly because they were not able to complete with the big industries okay so that's the reason this was the negative impact on the small producer the first one is they have hit badly okay second one they could not stand the competition just now i told you because they were not able to stand with the competition what happened they have to either shut down their uh, company or like you know they have to give it to the big companies or to the mncs so some industries like batteries capacitors or the plastic toys and all those things which has suffered very badly then due to this lot of people lost their jobs and faced unemployment and we know that how the vicious circle of unemployment happen once the unemployment that will lead to the poverty then vicious circle of poverty also starts so globalization for the small producer impact was very bad why because the first one they were not able to uh, complete with the big industry when they were not able to complete with the big industry what happened they have to shut down their industry and when they shut down their industry there were a lot of people who have lost their job the question can come for two marks so out of three points you can write any two points okay very very important question how globalization has affected the lives of indians explain with three examples okay so here we are talking the late the previous question we were talking about the impact of globalization on small producer but here we are learning about the affected the indian 
uh, affected the Indians. Okay, how the globalization has affected the Indians. So this will be for, sorry, this will be for five marks question. So impact of globalization in India, greater competition among producer, both local and foreign. So it has been advantage to the consumer. This we have learned in detail, like, you know, whenever there is a competition between two people, always who will be the beneficial, that will be third person. So here with this example, I can tell you when there is a competition between two producer, always the consumer is in a beneficial part. So I have given you the example of air ticket. Okay. Suppose for example, if I give you the example, 15 years back the line, when I have traveled my first flight, it was luxury for me. But now when you people are traveling in the airline, it is not luxury. It is a necessity. So how like, you know, because of the competition, how the producers are get, uh, sorry, because of the competition, how the consumers are in a beneficial area. So always remember whenever there is a competition, between the producer, it will be always the consumer who will be getting maximum benefit. So particularly the well-off sections in the urban area, there is a greater choice before the consumer who can enjoy the improved quality and lower price of several products. So now we can easily compare two products or three products and then we will be like, you know, after comparing which is good, which has the maximum uh, number of benefits, then only we go. So that this is how like, you know, the impact of globalization, this were all were the positive impact. Consumers are in advantage, the, uh, variety of choices are available, prices has been decreased, then much standard, higher standard of living uh, has increased. So these were all are the positive impact of globalization. Increase, in, increase in the investment. MNC has increased their investment in India over past 15 years. So I just gave you the example before 15 years when I, I have taken my first flight, it was a luxury for me. But now for you people, it's not luxury. It is a necessity. Okay. It is a need of an art, which means investing in India has been beneficial for them. New jobs has been created. This is again a positive area. Local companies supplying raw material, etc. Industries has proposed increased competition. Okay, when competition has increased, what happened? It has benefited the, uh, it has always uh, benefited the, uh, uh, the consumer as well as they have invested in the newer technology. So new technology has come in India and there are a lot of areas where like, you know, the standard of living has also increased. Then transmission into the MNC globalization has enabled some larger Indian companies to emerge as multinational themselves. Okay, it's not only like, you know, MNCs are coming. We as an Indian companies also, we started moving as an MNC to different country. Okay, for our country, we are a local brand, but when our product goes into, or like, you know, when our company go and establish in different country, for their country, our country's industries are called as MNC. New opportunities has been created, new opportunities with provided, uh, like, you know, uh, particularly which has involved the IT sector, okay? Globalization majorly, like, you know, uh, impacted positively into the IT sector. Explain the meaning of fair globalization. Fair, what do you, it's a general English word, fair globalization. Like, you know, the, why the globalization needs to be not biased, okay? Why it has to be fair globalization. Fair globalization would create opportunities for all and ensures that the benefit of the globalization are shared by all. Okay, so it should not be that globalization, only one section of the society needs to get the benefit or only one country or only the developed country needs to be getting the advantage. So what is fair globalization, which ensures the benefits of globalizations are shared by all. Government can play a major role in making this possible. It, its policies must protect the interest of rich and poor both. Okay, so just now I told you that it should not be like, you know, only one section of the society is getting the benefit and the other section of the society is not getting the benefit. Labor laws, labor laws are properly implemented and the workers get their rights. Okay, again, like, you know, labor laws are properly implemented. 
fair globalization will be happening only that time when there will be labor laws which are implemented properly and mncs are not exploiting okay one of the negative aspect of globalization is uh, labors are exploited very badly so labor laws has to be implemented properly it can support the small producer by putting some restriction or the barriers it's very important that we have learned what happened to the small producer because they are not able to complete with the large companies they have to shut down their business so somewhere the government needs to take care that the small uh, producer needs to flourish so that like you know uh, they they will not uh, shut down their business so some restriction needs to be bring about so that uh, the small producer can also complete with the large industries it can negotiate at the wto for the fair rules it's very important again very very important question 3 marks or 5 marks when the question paper used to come for 80 marks this question always used to come for 5 marks but now it's a 40 marks paper so the marks like you know because economics is only going to for uh, going to come for 10 marks and we have covered both the chapters okay uh, you can uh, go back and see my uh, previous videos where i have covered money and credit and this is the second chapter which is going to come in the board exam that is globalization and indian economy and this is the last video for this chapter so uh, students if you are going to again and again see this video i am sure that from economics you will able to attempt all the questions because both the chapters we have covered so try to learn like you know every day try to learn three to four questions so that you can excel in your exam so fair globalization would create opportunities for all and also ensure that benefits of globalization are shared better support the statement the question now as i told you the the limitations of us is like you know now the economics is going to only come for 10 marks so the question can come for 3 marks five it's very rare or it can come for two marks but definitely this question is one of the very very hot questions question globalization is not providing to be a fair deal fair globalization would create opportunities for all and also ensures that the benefit of globalization are shared better first government policies must protect the interest of not only the rich and powerful but also all the people in the country so globalization whenever we are talking about globalization it is very important then when the government makes the policy okay they should not only make the policy for the rich people they should be taking care of every individual in the country which is the policies needs to benefit to each and every individual neither than they should be only for the rich people second go government should ensure that the labor laws are uh implemented properly very important then small producer needs to be supported to improve their productivity government can use trade and investment barriers if needed it's very important okay if government brings the investment barriers what will happen here the small producers will able to sustain in the market government should be ready to negotiate at wto for ensuring fair rules then if necessary government should align with the countries with similar interest to oppose the domination of major and powerful players in the wto so what happens in wto or like you know usually it is a developed country who tries to dominate so now here what is developing country needs to do developing country needs to do the alignment or they need to do uh, the negotiation with wto in in such a way that the uh, developed country will not dominate the developing countries so with this uh, we have completed the chapter globalization and indian economy keep tuning for the next video for the next new chapter thank you